y'all wholesome brother tv back up in here giving y'all nothing but the most wholesome content you'll ever find in the universe i'm back up in here giving y'all um the eastern conference my playoff predictions for that um i don't want to waste no more time bro let's just get right into it bucks versus the magic I, th there's not really to talk about here i feel like the Magic, they just don't have anybody to match up against Giannis. They don't have anybody, in my opinion, that he can, can even hold um, Chris Middleton um, from doing their thing. So there's nothing to talk about. Plus, they lost Jonathan Isaac to injury, and Jonathan Isaac was starting to produce really well. Uh, I do like the way Aaron Gordon's playing, the way Markel Fultz is coming along. That's all well and good. Obviously, we know what we're going to get out of Vucevic, but... They just don't have enough to beat the Milwaukee Bucks. There's not really much to talk about. Here. Next, got the Toronto Raptors taking on the Brooklyn Nets. Again, not much to talk about. We obviously understand how short-sighted and short-handed the Brooklyn Nets are. Their best player right now is arguably Karis LeVert. Um, they don't have KD. They don't have Kyrie. They don't have DeAndre Jordan. They don't have many pieces. They got a lot of young guys. They do have Joe Harris, who is a steady contributor, especially from three. But... Again, the Toronto Raptors, they're a very solid, good team. I think it's a 4-0 sweep. I don't think that the Brooklyn Nets just have, they don't have enough, in my opinion, to compete with the uh, Toronto Raptors. Heat versus the Pacers. Some people are saying that's supposed to be a good matchup. I don't believe so. I think the Pacers, um, they're really going to have to, it comes down to if TJ Warren and Victor Oladipo ball out, okay, then they have a shot. But I just, I'm sorry, I can't put my hope and trust that TJ Warren is going to ball out. Obviously, we know what Victor Oladipo is capable of, but he's still trying to get back to his old self. You can clearly tell that some days the injury plagues him, and some days, you know, he's back to Victor Oladipo. So the fact that he's just a little inconsistent, and again, you put Jimmy Butler on TJ Warren, TJ Warren, I'm sorry, he goes out the game. Plus, the Pacers, they don't have Sabonis. I like the Pacers a lot, but I just don't think they have enough to beat the Heat. I think the Heat beat the Pacers in five games. Um, I see the Pacers maybe squeaking out one game. That That's, I think, just because I feel like one day maybe the Heat will struggle or they'll uh, have, a, you know, just an off night. And I feel like the Pacers will take advantage of that. But other than that, um, I have the Heat winning again. I know that the Pacers, TJ Warren's been balling out. I forgot to even mention Malcolm Brogdon, who seems to be back and healthier. But I just feel like the, the Heat are just too talented, especially on the defensive end, um, to just let those guys all just go off as a collective. The Celtics versus the Sixers, I believe that's going to be the most interesting matchup of the Eastern Conference uh, first round, to be honest with you. And I don't even see it being that much of a competition. I feel like without Ben Simmons, the Sixers are completely uh, just overmatched. I believe that they had don't, just don't have enough. I believe losing Ben Simmons, his defense, and the pressure he puts on point guards, um, I think they're going to miss that a lot. Again, also Embiid, he seems to be healthy one day, not healthy the next um, so I just don't know, man. I don't know about the Sixers team. I want the Sixers to win so bad, but I just don't believe it's going to happen. Unfortunately, <sighs> that stupid team in green, the Boston Celtics will move on. I believe they beat the Sixers in five games. I think the Sixers squeak out one, but I just feel like having Campbell Walker, Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown all coming at you. And then plus you do get help from Gordon Hayward, and we know what Marcus Smart does for that team. I think that's just too much for the Sixers to handle, especially without Ben Simmons. That the Heat and Bucks will match up in a second round matchup. That is going to be a very, very interesting series. Now, Jimmy Butler believes that they have the talent on the Miami Heat to win it all. I don't agree with that, but hey, I can't knock him for thinking that. Having said all that, they match up really well with the Bucks. Um, I believe that the Heat are the probably the best team in the East to give the Bucks the most headaches. Um, just because you can put Bam out of Bayou on Giannis, and I'm not saying the whole game, but again, just throwing a body at Giannis. You put Jimmy Butler on him for a little bit, not too long, you throw Bam on him. You can even if you want to for a tiny bit, I know he's a little a bit older, but even Andre Iguodala may be able to um, slow down Giannis just a few plays. But 
again, they just have a lot of bodies on that squad that they can throw at Giannis. And I believe that also the fact that they have so many players and they have, in my opinion, a very strong bench that they can keep rotating. I feel like that's going to put even more pressure on Giannis and Chris Middleton as well. And that whole Milwaukee squad to really produce and keep up with the scoring because the Miami Heat are very stingy on defense. They don't like to give up points. They make you work and earn every single point you get. And I think that's going to be a big struggle for the Milwaukee Bucks, especially if they can't produce points when Giannis goes to the bench. Because that means Giannis is going to have to play more. And if he has to play more, he's going to get tired. And you're not going to see as many drives to the lane, Giannis getting by and all that stuff like that, if this man is out there playing almost 40 minutes a game or 40 plus. Like, I just feel like the Heat are going to give the Bucks the most trouble in the East, in my opinion. I believe they match up with them the best in the East. And, hey, I'm not picking the Heat, but I definitely think this series between uh, the Heat and the Bucks goes six games. I think... Um, the Heat offensively, I don't know if they're going to be able to keep up with the Bucks scoring. But like I said, what trumps all of that is the Heat defense. They're very stingy. Now, the Bucks they play great defense too. And Giannis, he's in the running for de defensive play of the year. But I just feel like it's going to be a lot tougher for Giannis to do Giannis-like things when they got constant fresh dudes that they can throw onto Giannis to make sure that he isn't just flying around the court. But like I said, six games, I think Milwaukee will take care of the Heat. Now, the other second round matchup would be the Celtics and Raptors. Another, in my opinion, great series. Um, I'd be very intrigued to watch how the, the Raptors try and handle Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and Kemba Walker. Um, I would love to see uh, Marcus Smart guard... Uh, Kyle Lowry, I feel like they're both just dogs and and they just want to win and they do all the dirty work. So having them go at it to me would be that's going to be entertaining to watch. I just feel like the Toronto Raptors are uh, just a little bit better than the Celtics. And that's not even my bias coming out. I know I cannot stand that team in green, but I just feel like the Toronto Raptors are just a little bit better than the Celtics. So I have the Raptors beating the Celtics in six games as well. I believe this series goes six. Um, I, I believe the first couple games are going to go back and forth. And I feel like Toronto's going to figure it out. Nick Nurse, that bench, Fred Van Vliet, all those guys that are coming off the bench that have been balling out this season so far, uh, especially in these seeding games. I believe that eventually Toronto is just going to put the do what they got to do to put themselves over the Boston Celtics. And then we get to the Eastern Conference Finals, which Bucks and Raptors. I feel like I, I don't know. This 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 series could go seven. Just because I feel like the, the Raptors, the way they've been playing in the bubble, has been excellent. Like their bench play has always been good. Um uh, we know what you're gonna get out of Kyle Lowry. You know what you're gonna get out of Pascal Siakam. And again, I can't stress this enough. Fred Van Vliet is so nice for them. Like, the way he's been able to ball out has been just amazing, in my opinion. And I feel like he's a key contributor to that team. Um, I feel like both of these teams match up pretty well. I do think that the Bucks this time will win the series. I believe the series goes seven games. I don't think that... It's going to be a clean sweep or anything like that. Um, I don't think the Bucks will take care of them in five. I believe that the Raptors are talented enough to take the Bucks to seven games. But I think Giannis is just on a mission this year. He's determined. I think that whole team is focused and determined. And also, if Eric Bledsoe can get his game together and honestly contribute just a little bit more than he has, I know that he's been out for the start of the seeding games and he's trying to get his rhythm back. But if Eric Bledsoe... I feel like if he can just provide uh, an extra spark, and I feel like if George Hill can come off the bench for the Bucks and also give a spark um, and just give a little bit relief for Giannis when Giannis goes to the bench or if Chris Middleton is on the bench, like they just need one more guy. Obviously, we know what Lopez can do, what the Lopez twins can do, uh, but more so Brooke um, than Robin can do in terms of scoring the basketball. Again, Milwaukee, they're a very sound defensive team, but 
I just feel like the Toronto Raptors are talented enough. They have the roster that is built to at least go seven games with the Bucks. But if it does go to seven games, I'm taking the Bucks in seven to reach the NBA Finals. That's all I got for y'all today. Again, I got the Bucks coming out of the East. And uh, like I said yesterday, I posted that video yesterday. I do have the Clippers coming out of the West. Now, tomorrow, I will post a video uh, giving you my finals prediction. Make sure y'all comment down below who you think is going to make it out the East, whether or not you agree or disagree with me, all that good stuff. Make sure y'all comment and uh, let me know. Y'all take care. I'm going to get the hell up out of here. Stay wholesome, like I said. Stay blessed, all that. And I'm gone, bro. Free.